Hello, in this video we derived the method of moments estimators for the beta binomial distribution. And if we let x be a beta binomial with parameters alpha, beta, and n, then the probability mass function is this. And I'm going to pass you off to a video that I called the mean and the variance of a beta binomial distribution where we derive this and we talk about it. The supports of x is from 0 to n, etc. And in that video, we derived the, the mean and the second moment of this random variable. And in method of moments estimation, what we do is we set the, popu the sample and population moments equal and then solve for alpha and beta. So if we let m1 be the first moment, which is just the sum of the xi's divided by n, set it equal to the population moment, and then we do that for this, the population second moment. We look at the sample second moment, which is the sum of the xi squared divided by n. So, you know, and, and now we start solving. So here, we bring it down. Then we multiply this up and then subtract over alpha m1. And we get this equation. And then to solve for alpha, we divide by n minus m1 and this is an estimate for alpha now we have to plug this into the second equation and then solve for beta and then once we get that estimate for beta then we plug it back in this one so m2 and the estimate so here's the estimate so we put alpha in every spot here and that's what we do here so this is our estimate for alpha here, 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 and here. Now what I want to do is get rid of these denominators. So I'm going to multiply the top by n minus m1 squared and the denominator by n minus m1 squared. So we're multiplying by 1 so it doesn't change it. But then I also want to cancel a beta. So there's a beta common here so I factored out and there's a beta there, so we just cancel those. So that's what this next step represents. So since it's squared, I think we take one of them into here and then the other one into this one. And we do the same way down here. We take one of them into this one and then one of those into this. So we get M, M1, beta. Oh, and then I'm, I must have multiplied this out too. Okay. So we took M1, N, M, see this beta is gone, and that is, is gone. So we just left with an M. So we take the M into here, the N, M, into here, but one of these is multiplied in, and that's what this is. So anyway, so after all that, this reduces to this numerator. And the denominator, so one of them cancels here. And remember the beta is factored out, so that's where that M1 is. And here, uh, the beta is factored out, but we're multiplying by one of these, so we get this. And then we do the same thing for over here. Okay. Now, let's multiply this in everywhere. And then we, and then we multiply the the denominator and we get this and so now what I want to do is collect terms that have a beta you know so we'll do that in the denominator and then collect the terms that are you know don't have a beta which would be this one you know this one and this so when, when I turn it over that's what we did so and then I factored out a beta of these terms and then these were the constants I put square brackets so we can kind of keep track of that and here we factored out a beta and then here's the the terms without a beta now remember this we set this population moment to m2 so what we're going to do is multiply this up and then the, the beta terms times that we're going to subtract over to this side and combine with these and then of course this times that is going to stay over here and we're going to subtract that over so that's what this step represents. Oh, well, I should look at the screen first. So I simplify. So this is clearly this. 
you know, I just multiply that in, into each term. Uh, here, oh, we get lots of cancelizations just to n squared, which is just this term. All the others cancel. This, we get some cancellation to that. Now I do the trick where we multiply this up and then subtract it over. And then we get this. So we put all the beta terms on one side and all the constants on the other. Then to solve for beta, we just divide both sides by this piece, which is what we do here. The numerator can factor into this. The denominator can simplify into this. So this is our beta estimate. And it actually is not quite what Wikipedia has. They divide every, every th the numerator and denominator by M1 to get some sort of simplifications, but I don't think so, so I'm not going to do it. But this is equivalent to what they got on Wikipedia. Now we take this beta and stick it back into that original formula. And so that's this right here. And I'm missing a parenthesis then this piece cancels with this piece and that is multiplied up for this and then this is this denominator and that's it and again they simply well they try to simplify it if they um, if they take this and think of is this a denominator so then they divide that in but really I like this form better now the example that they gave on Wikipedia, and I'm going to use this because I'm going to calculate the maximum likelihood estimates for the beta binomial, and then I'm going to illustrate this in an R program over the next couple of videos. But the example they provided on Wikipedia is they look at families that had 12 kids, and then they count the number of male children that they that the you know family had. And, and this is it. So this is the distribution. And so this is the number of families they looked at. And then of those, how many had 12 males? How many had 11? How many had 10? All the way to how many families had zero males? And there's only three of them. So from this, you can calculate the sample mean, the first moment, and then the second sample moment. And then these can be used to calculate the method of moments estimated for alpha and method of moments estimated for beta. So that's all I have for this video. The next two videos, the next one will be the maximum likelihood estimator for the beta binomial distribution. And then the video after that, we're going to illustrate method of moments and maximum likelihood estimation in an R program. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.